Unless you started your instrument training over 20 years ago, you probably only briefly heard about marker beacons, which are a traditional method of determining position on an instrument approach like an ILS. Given that we only learned about them in passing, it's a bit understandable that we don't pay them much mind. But here's a stark reminder of why we should at least know what they are and why they work. That noise is an inner marker indication. It's a shrill warning-like sound, which this close to the ground on departure is unsettling if you're not expecting it. It's not a traffic alert or any other problem, it means we passed over the inner marker beacon for the ILS for runway 14, the opposite runway from where we've just departed here at Shreveport. Most G1000 units, as well as some other modern avionics platforms, still have marker beacon indications, and they can go off even if you're not flying or tuned to the corresponding approach. We've just seen the inner marker. Let's look at the other two, the outer and the middle markers. Here, we're on the ILS to runway 7 at Lorraine County. At the initial approach fix, Rawls is a shaded football symbol. This is the outer marker for the ILS with the acronym OM next to Rawls. On a precision approach, the final approach fix is defined as the point where we intercept the glide slope at the published glide slope intercept altitude which is 2,500, and is denoted by the lightning bolt symbol. However, what if the glide slope were out and we were flying the non-precision localizer-only version of the approach? There are a few ways to identify the non-precision final approach fix, which is the Rawls intersection. One of them is, of course, GPS, which with the G1000 we have. Another is DME. Rawls is 5.8 DME from the drier VOR. Another still is the outer marker, we don't need to tune into any frequency to receive it. The G1000 is typically set to receive any and all marker beacons, as we saw on the departure from Shreveport. If we look at the profile view of the approach, we see above the Maltese cross the figure 2263. This is the altitude on the glide slope where we will pass over the outer marker. We should expect the indication to sound when we're at that altitude. This is helpful on both the precision and non-precision version of this approach. Doing the ILS here, we intercept it at 2,500, but it's after we start down on the glide slope and pass 2,263 feet that we hear the indication. The other type of marker is the middle marker. These might be the rarest of all the marker beacons at this point. To help us find one to demonstrate, let's use a neat tool from the FAA website. From their homepage, click Air Traffic from up top, then Flight Information. We'll go to Aeronautical Charts, then we'll choose Aeronautical Data. Let's go into the 28-day subscription, and we'll choose the current one. We want to download the latest database on all ILS approaches in the country. Once we download and extract the data, we have a few CSV files we can use Excel to open. Let's open the one ILS MKR with marker data. We're going to filter the data on the ILS components field to give us approaches that have middle markers. There's only about two dozen or so. Let's pick this one, the ILS runway 30 at KOPN in Thomaston, Georgia. As before, we see the shaded football symbol. This time, though, it's closer to the runway and says MM above it for middle marker. Where the middle marker is located is about where the decision altitude is reached along the glide slope. Notice that it's not exactly the same as the decision altitude, though. That's 996 feet, while the marker is set to go off at 984 feet. So we still use the 996 as the official minimum. The marker beacon goes off, and we should be making our decision to miss or continue the approach. Also note that all these marker altitudes can vary with changes in temperature, which affect indicated versus true altitude. The marker served as an indication of where an aircraft was on the approach prior to other tools like GPS or DME being used. You'll still see them out there though, so don't be alarmed when your marker panel starts buzzing at you when you least expect it. For more high caliber training, check out Flight Insight, IFR Ground School, and more at the link here and in the description.